Hi guys, welcome to Making Sawdust. I'm Kevin. Thanks for joining me. Welcome to the first video of my Craftsman 3 horsepower contractor table saw disassembly, reassembly, and shakedown. I picked this up off Facebook Marketplace for $60 the other day, and we are going to inspect it, do a mild tune up, get it in the basement, and assess what more things we need to do to it. First thing we'll do is we'll probably take this motor off. Loosen the belt, take the motor off. the adjuster and next will be the bottom pin. It just looks like a circlet. Next thing we are going to want to do is pull these rails off so we can get the wings taken off. Now that we've got it this far, I still need to take it off of the base. It's just uh, four bolts and nuts. It'll come off pretty easy. And I can transport it downstairs. It's actually still terribly heavy. It's probably 80 or 90 pounds, just the saw main body. I'm also going to need to find a spot for it. It's much larger than my Skill 3410 and a lot heavier. So now that we've got it downstairs and somewhat situated where I want it, I have it turned upside down so I do some inspection on the trunnion and the bearings in the arbor and stuff like that. What I have noticed, actually when I bought it first, I noticed it, there is no handle to adjust the angle on the play, but we should be able to make something and I'm sure I'll make a video of those. They are plastic handles that are on this saw and I do hear that they do break. So we'll make some nice fancy walnut knobs or something. I've already checked the bearings in the trunnion and there's no wobble, there's no noise in them at all. So that is awesome. There's a little bit of surface rust on threaded rod that adjusts the trunnion for your angle. 
that is okay. One of the one of the neat things about these contractor saws is the trunnion is adjustable, so you can make sure that your blade is parallel to the miter slots. And some saws are really hard to adjust. This one is pretty nice looking. There's really not a lot of wear on this saw at all. So we are going to get this assembled and give it a shakedown run. So I've got it reassembled and I've got the fence adjusted so it's just over the tabletop. I had to adjust these rails and the cam lock was super, super tight so I adjusted that. I've raised the blade all the way up and I've made sure that my blade and my trunnion are parallel to my miter slots. That is right on. One thing I also had to do is adjust my insert because it was sticking up in the back side but there's four allen set screws right here that needed to be adjusted and i've got that fixed up i also ran through just a quick piece of kind of paneling eighth inch paneling wafer board and it's just to test cut it and it seemed super tight getting towards the outfeed side of it and what that tells me is my fence is not square. I hadn't even measured it. It looked good. Uh, that can create a serious problem and kickback. Once your material is leaving the table saw area, the back side of the blade will have a tendency to lift up that material and throw it back at you. So, so that is the next thing I'm going to do is adjust my fence to make sure it is parallel to the miter slots, which is parallel to the blade for safety. One other thing I'm going to want to do, and that's for an upcoming video, is make a new insert with a splitter on the back side. And also polish up this table. There's a lot of videos on YouTube about truing these saws up. So I'm going to do my own video on tuning this up completely, uh, removing any rust, waxing the top, making sure the wings are flat and other tips on how to square this fence up and all that make sure to follow my blog and the article i wrote on this saw it's going to have a full parts list and where you can find replacement parts for these saws so thanks for joining me guys stay tuned for all future videos on this saw full tune up uh, probably not put a new belt on it. We're going to fine tune the fence and we're also going to mount the switch in a different location and I'm going to explain why I'm going to do that. If this is the first time to making sawdust, please consider clicking the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. Always leave me a comment, especially if you like classic tools, budget tools, and restoration. Now get out of your shop and start making some sawdust.